What's up guys, today I'm going to be showing you how to get this stipple shading effect, super useful effect in Illustrator. I love this technique because you get a nice vectorized sort of medium with this cool like organic human looking shaded feel. So this was something quick that I made, I wrote the word stipple. Um, I'm going to show you my process, uh, two different ways that I stipple shaded these objects. Um, but first I'm going to show you how to install the brushes that I've got linked in the description. There's a website where you can find eight awesome uh, free stipple shading brushes for Illustrator and I've been using them for a while so uh, I think they're great. So here's how you install the brushes. Um, so mine are already showing up here because I've got them installed. Pull up the brushes window. You can find it here too. Uh, brushes click on the brush libraries menu and there's where mine are showing up. Go to other library and make sure that you've already downloaded the file from the website linked. Um, and wherever you downloaded that file, remember mine's on the desktop and I saved it into a folder called illustrator brushes and it's this file here. Um, and it's a legacy file, but that's not going to affect what we're doing. Um, so go ahead and press open on that and it'll give you a, I think a nine slice scaling window because of legacy. Don't worry about that. I'm going to press cancel because I've already installed it. Um, so then they'll show up so I can open up that window here and here are all of the options I have. I tend to lean towards this one and this one. I think I like these two. So let's get started in uh, the process. I'm gonna start by drawing the circle that I had earlier, you saw. I made it into an eye, so I thought that was fun. Um, so I got that. Don't necessarily need a fill. Um, and make sure I've got this selected. So now that I've got this selected, I'm going to uh, select the draw inside mode. You can also press Shift D twice to change these modes. So now this is automatically going to become a clipping mask for whatever I draw underneath. Um, so I am going to make this look like a three dimensional sphere by drawing another circle with this brush selected, um, sort of off center. I'm going to press hold shift and option so that it will uh, sort of radiate from where I'm uh, holding the, the mouse. And let me make sure that this brush is selected. Okay, so just there, you can see the process. I'm gonna adjust this a little bit. So it looks a little more like rim lighting on the bottom. I'm gonna make this a bit smaller. Okay. Um, and then I am going to duplicate that by shift option and then one of the arrow keys. Um, or you can just press option and one of the arrow keys. And I'm gonna select a slightly different brush. You can see all of the options here creating different effects, which is pretty nice. You can also, it's worth noting, you can change the point size of these brushes um, for even more sort of flexibility. Um, and I enjoy that capacity. Um, I'm going to make it smaller. I'm going to select that first brush we did again. I might have to select it here since it's getting a little cluttered. Right here. Duplicate it again. And now I'm just kind of messing around with the arrow keys to get sort of exactly what I'm looking for. I like that one. Adjust the sizing. So I'm going to remove the outline on this outer circle. I'm going to click off of it, go back to just the regular mode. Um, and there you have the sphere. Um, pretty cool effect. Looks like it's, you know, shaded by just a hand. Um, and I, I really love how you can uh, experiment with this process. So I could take this whole sphere and duplicate it. Kind of looks like bubbles or something. Um, it's kind of limitless. 
Um, so yeah, that is sort of an, a simple method for uh, shading. And that is just a simple path uh, clipping mask. Now I'm gonna show you exactly how I shaded the word that I showed you earlier as a compound path. Okay, so now I've got the word stipple typed out in this font called Planet Cosmos. I really like this font. Um, and so to start off, I'm going to convert this text into outlines and I'm gonna press Shift Command O or you can go to Object and Expand. So now it's outlines, um, but it's still not a compound path. So if we were tr gonna try and use it as a clipping mask, it would only select one of these letters as a shape. So to create a compound path, you press Command-8, or I believe you can find it in here, Make Compound Path. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and make it filled in so I can see where I, exactly I'm shading when I create the gradient uh, effect. So to do a gradient effect on this, um, I'm not gonna use the drawn side, Although I, I believe that, that that would work. I'm just going to use the pen tool and this process takes a little bit I haven't figured out a super fast way to do it that I that I totally like um, So I start by creating sort of a zigzag um, With with sort of like boxed off edges. Let me make sure it's not filled as a shape um, So I hold shift so that it creates straight lines and I go back and forth constantly getting just a little bit closer um, and I'm gonna skip ahead a little bit so you can see exactly what I'm talking about okay so I've got a nice cool gradient here um, it's not as smooth as I uh, would normally take the time to make it. Um, you can see the consistency of the, the distancing in these lines isn't perfect, but you can generally see what the process here is. So I, I've just gone done like a zigzag back and forth with sort of uh, boxed edges, uh, constantly getting slightly closer together to create this sort of uh, stippled gradient effect. And so this is already a compound path. I'm gonna press Command and left bracket to make sure that this is behind compound compound path. That just sort of moves it down in the layers window uh, or backwards. And so now to make it a, uh, to sort of combine these, I'm gonna shift click on both of them to select them both. And I'm gonna press click, make clipping mask. And so there you go. Now I've got two nice looking little graphics that don't necessarily look vectorized but that are completely malleable um, due to their vectorized state um, given that you know I can change the point size of a lot of this and uh, just completely manipulate it uh, so this effect is great in Photoshop but it's really awesome to be able to do it in Illustrator so yeah you've got this nice clipping mask here um, and that's gonna do it for this video um, I hope this was helpful and let me know in the comments if you've got uh, any other methods of stipple shading or feel free to link brushes that you found. Um, it's cool because this process uh, can transition into any other Illustrator brushes you can find. Um, there's a lot of cool hand-drawn stuff. You can uh, really, the experimentation is just sort of limitless with these kind of brushes in this process. So I'd love to see uh, what you guys are doing. Uh, let me know in the comments. And let me know if you'd like me to do any other tutorials. And let me know if this was helpful. Uh, thanks for watching. And I'll see you next time.